Hi, my name is Matt Kleskowski, and I wanted to go over some Lightroom updates with you. So this is uh, October 2017, and some pretty decent sized changes are happening in the Lightroom world right now. A um, little bit of a, some of a name, a little bit, big name change, and uh, and then some new features in the latest version of Lightroom. So um, I'm, I'm not going to go too much into the name change here. I actually wrote an article over on my website. It's linked in the description. So that kind of talks a little bit about the name change. Um, I kind of want to dive into the features, but Lightroom as we know it, all right, if you've been using Lightroom before today, Lightroom is now called Lightroom Classic, right? There is no new Lightroom CC 2017 version of the Lightroom that we had. We'll talk about that in a second. Um, there is no Lightroom 7 or anything like that. It's actually called Lightroom Classic from now going forward. That said, Lightroom CC, did not go away. Lightroom CC became a different product. All right. And that's, I actually wrote a little bit about it over on the website and who I think uh, that that new program is aimed for. Okay. So go check that link. You can read all about it. Let's dive into the features. Number one, I think uh, speed, speed across the board in, in the places where, where people have been asking for, from what I can see. So number one, when it comes to reviewing your photos, um, I'm gonna show you the feature in just a second. It's, it's not a new feature, it actually just works in a different way now, but you can go through your photos a lot faster. You know, you hit that right arrow key and get to that next photo a lot faster. And then going from library to develop, you know, that's always been a pain point. And then once you're in develop, you can actually hit the right arrow key and go through your photos a little faster there as well. Um, all right, let's dive into uh, to, to where the first change is gonna be. If you go into your file menu, go down to import, um, the, the setting is not different. All right. We've had embedded and sidecar there for a while and you kind of have to know a little bit about the history. So Adobe Lightroom has always kind of favored, um, accuracy over speed. So when you shoot in raw, your, your raw photos have this little embedded JPEG in them. Okay. So if you ever heard of a program like photo mechanic or on one browse or something like that, and you ever seen, you know, these, these photo, these programs are super fast to go through your photos. You can hit the right arrow key and fly through. It almost looks like a video. Well, the reason being is, is they're grabbing the embedded JPEG from the photo and they're actually able to go through that a lot faster. The only catch is, is that embedded JPEG is not quite as accurate in color as the raw file. So your raw file is typically a little bit flatter, but Adobe has always favored the accuracy over the speed. So now they're giving us the option. If you use the embedded and sidecar option, what's going to happen is it's going to grab that embedded JPEG and you're going to be able to fly through your photos with that right arrow key. So it's going to happen a lot faster. Um, once you get inside a Lightroom, you're actually going to see if you start, if you're in a library module, you start going through your photos, you hit the right arrow key. You can see the little embedded preview sign down there in the bottom. So that means that you're looking at the embedded preview. If you ever want to get to the regular version of the photo, it happens pretty quick, but watch what happens. You can just click on this. All right, you ready? See how it got a little bit flatter? That's pretty common because your raw photos, that, that embedded JPEG is juiced a little bit. It's already processed by the camera where your raw photo is literally the raw data, okay? So that's the first one. Next one, the, the, to me, this, this next stuff is some of the more fun stuff inside of here. Um, I'm gonna go into, uh, we'll go grab a couple of photos. Let's take a look at the first one. And so as an example, what I have here is a kind of a bright, almost blown out sky. Um, and we typically use the graduated filter or the radial filter, the adjustment brush to make these changes. Well, each one of these tools now has something called um, a range mask associated with it. So when we go here, I'm going to grab the graduated filter and, um, and let's just bring the exposure down and I'll click and drag and drag down there. Okay. And I think overall, I might even want to boost, boost the uh, exposure up just a little bit, maybe make it a little more. There we go. So what I just did is, is I made the whole, I made the whole top of the photo dark. And I've always had little tricks, you know, I could, you could use the shadow slider. We had these little workarounds to, to try to, you know, the, the trees got darker as well, not just the sky. Um, and I like the darkness over the fog here because there was more detail. It was more gray. It had some more mood to it, but I don't want the trees to get too dark. Well, what we can do now is go down to the range mask. And what the range mask does is it, it lets you take a range and make a mask. <laughs> Um, it essentially, if you look at it here, what we can do is we can choose color or luminance. What's the range? So I'm going to use a, a luminance option for this one. 
and you'll opens up this rain slider here. And what we can do is if you were to imagine a gradient from black to white, we take these sliders and we basically tell Lightroom, I only want you to apply that graduated filter within this range, within these range of tones. Okay. So whatever's between those two sliders is where the effect is going to get applied. Everything that's outside of that range, it's going to get hidden from that. So when it, when I say hidden, remember we darkened the top of the photo. So if I hide that adjustment, it's going to make it brighter again. It's going to bring us back to the original. So in this case, I'd bring, I don't want to make any of the, the bright stuff darker uh, or, or brighter. So I don't want to limit the range over here. What I do want to do is pull this over and start to really focus in. So it's just making the bright parts of the photo darker. All right. And as I go up here and now I start to wiggle the exposure slider, you'll see it happening. See that? So now it's really honing in on that part of the photo. Um, you also have a smoothness slider. Think of the smoothness as a feathering type of a slider at zero. It's going to be very strict to the range that you give it. As you start to increase it, it starts to feather that change out a little bit more. Um, so generally you're going to keep it at a, a fairly high setting in there, unless you had very straight edges on something. Okay. So if you take a look at the before and after that's before and that's after. All right, let's take a look at something with, uh, with a little bit of color here. So, Here's a photo that here's a photo that I think what, what I would do is sometimes, sometimes I make a big edit to a photo knowing that I'm going to draw attention to another area later. So sometimes I'd come into a photo and make it darker. I want to make this very moody. Okay? So I'm going to make it darker knowing that later on I can bring attention to the flower. So how would I do that? I'd probably go to my radial filter and um, jump in here and I'd go to the exposure, bring the exposure to the plus side. And let's see here and just go kind of click and drag and make a circle around the flower. Right about there. Okay. So now I have my circle around the flower. It's, all, it's actually doing the opposite of what I want here. It's darkening or brightening the background. And I don't want that. So I'm going to go down to the invert checkbox because you can guarantee the invert checkbox is always going to be checked to what you don't want it to be checked to. Just, it's just one of those laws of nature. Um, so anyway, so I've got my uh, invert checkbox here. Let's, uh, let's bring the feather down a little bit. So now it's making the flower brighter, but it's obviously brightening the background too, right? So now let's do this. Let's, uh, let's make it a little bit bigger actually, just so we can expand. So it's pulling in all this green back here. Well, now we go into our range mask and I'm going to select color. And then what we can do is use this eyedropper. We can use it in a couple of ways. We can go take the eyedropper and we can click on part of the photo and we can say, I want you to restrict the adjustment that we made, which what was the adjustment? We, we opened up the exposure. I want you to restrict the adjustment we just made to just this color. Okay. So it's only going to make that part of the photo brighter. And then you can even go in here and hold down your shift key and you can add multiple points and you could tell it, I want you to really, you know, open up to, to a lot more colors. Okay. Now let's, uh, let's go ahead and hit, um, in fact, let's just close out of there. Instead of doing that, what you can also do is click and drag. So I can go over here and I can click and drag on the photo. And now it uses that entire range that I clicked and dragged over, which is pretty cool. So I think that actually works better. There's an amount slider too. the amount kind of, in this case, I probably want it pretty low because I really want to keep it focused in on the flower there. Uh, if I didn't, I could open that up and bring in some of the background. Um, and then you have all your other tools. Cause I don't expect any one of these tools to, to do the job perfectly for you the first time, but you've got all these other tools that are still inside a Lightroom that work the same way. So for example, like there's a little, uh, there's a little background, a little bokeh or bouquet, depending on what religion you are. Um, you could see here, there's a little bit of green fringe and that's because there's red, but it's blurry. It goes to the green. Well, that'd be a good time to just go grab the brush tool. Okay. Remember we can go and we can subtract. If I hold down the option key on the Mac or the alt key on the PC, I can subtract some of these areas from here. 
And so I could go and I could brush around the edges. Um, in fact, in this case, I think we, we kind of opened up our range too much. So I would even bring that down a little bit. Or let's go down to the, uh, the actual range math there. I'd even bring that in a little bit tight. There we go. And then I would take my brush tool and I would go over here and maybe kind of just paint in on a couple of those little edges there just to hide our tracks a little bit. Okay. But take a look. That's before and that's after. So overall from, from out of the gate, I think it did a good job of, of bringing that range in. But you always have your brushes. You always have your other tools um, if you need to go in there and refine it a little bit. Okay. Guys, again. Uh, I mentioned the website. If you want to find out a little bit more about the uh, the new features and especially the the I think the big news, which is the the name change. Um, if you want to find out a little bit more about that, I wrote about it over on my website. There's a link in the description. In the meantime, thanks so much for watching, and I'll talk to you again soon.